All right, welcome into another day of your daily Devo, and I am Pastor Rick, and we are in James chapter one. And admittedly, admittedly, it's taken us a minute and a half, you know, to to get through this chapter. But again, uh, it's a lot of good stuff in here. We don't want to rush it, so let's take it a few more verses at a time. I'm feeling like I'm feeling optimistic, folks. I think we might get a couple of extra verses knocked out today. So in order to allow that to happen. I'll cut through all the chit chat and we're just going to get to work uh, here in verse 9 as we left off yesterday in verse 8. If you have not seen uh, the first couple videos, um, and we actually had a little bit of a bonus one yesterday, so you can go check that out and, uh, and see what you have to see. And so verse 9, let the brother of humble circumstances boast in his exaltation, but let the rich boast in his humiliation because he will pass away like a flower of the field for the sun rises and together with the scorching wind dries up the grass its flower falls off and its beautiful appearance perishes in the same way the rich person will wither away while pursuing his activities so here verses 9 10 and 11 we just have the comparison of two different people we have the person of humble circumstances kind of the the poor person and then we have the rich person and we have basically the the evening the evening of the playing field that if you are poor you have the challenges that a poor person has of having to really kind of believe god trust god for for your next potentially your next meal or where are you going to sleep or you know depending on the level of the poverty so there's challenges there because you could question God's faithfulness and such based on your lack of physical provision. So you could be doubting God. Uh, you could be doubting God. You could have a strain on your relationship with God. You could I mean, any of those kinds of things. Right. Or just you're so stressed out about life that you have a hard time growing in your relationship with God because you're distracted and you're pulled away. So there are some, and certainly not all, of the challenges that can be faced when you find yourself in that humble circumstance or that place of poverty or being just being really poor. Then he goes and talks about the rich person, and the rich person doesn't really have it any better. Again, as long as you're keeping eternity as your perspective, then just having an easy life here, having a lot of money here, having the ability to do super cool things or whatever – is fleeting it it's like sure there there's like maybe some value to that but there's certainly not a lot right and so it's trying to help even the playing field when it comes to the gospel when it comes to church life when it comes to how we treat one another that it needs not uh needs to not be based on somebody's socioeconomic situation somebody's color of skin something like this all kinds of, right? Because we know that in Christ, there's no Jew or Greek, no male or female, right? We are all, we're all, we're all in Christ. When we come to Christ, we're all identified as in Christ. And all of those other differences just fall away. And that's one of the biggest beauties of the gospel. It's the greatest unifier of humanity out there. It's amazing what Jesus does to bring people together from all different walks of life. I mean, Jesus modeled that from just the disciples that he chose and walked with for the time while he was here on the earth. So he brings people together that normally would pretty much hate each other. It's one of the awesome parts of the gospel. Another thing to think about is like we talked about the poor person and how their relationship with God can be a little bit strained because of their lack of finances. But then you start talking about the rich person and their relationship with God can be strained because they think they've got it all together. They don't need God. They don't need to seek him. They don't need to, you know, get in front of him every single day. And so there can be a challenge there in their relationship with God because of their own success. So 
we we can get in our own way when we are not successful and we can get in our way when we are really successful we're good at we're good at it regardless right i mean how many know what i'm talking about drop a little bit of an amen in the comment section if you know what i'm talking about there like no it doesn't matter if i have a lot of money or uh no money i am really good i'm really good at either you know i kind of like taking God out of the equation a little bit there and uh, trusting trusting in my own self a little too much. So if it's solving that financial problem, if it's, uh, you know, being a little boastful, you know, that I, I helped accomplish that. So that's the poor person and the rich person, the person of humble circumstance and the, the rich person there in verses 9, 10, and 11. <clears throat> so let's keep moving on to verse 12. Blessed is the one blessed is the one who endures trials that's everybody's favorite verse today um let like when's the last time you saw that on a coffee cup <laughs> hmm i we should make that coffee cup and we should sell that uh equipped disciple youtube channel merch you know blessed is the one who endures trials but here we go because when he stood the test he will receive the crown of life that god has promised to those who love him <clears throat> and for whatever reason, this morning as I was digging into this passage, um, this little section right here, to those who love him, really stuck out to me. Um, and and I know that Jesus says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments, right? So loving God comes first, and then obedience comes second. Now, it shouldn't be separated by much. It should flow out of, you know, one should flow out of the other. I think sometimes we get it, we get it mixed up, we get it backwards, and we we think about, <clears throat> excuse me, we think about obeying God before we think about loving God. But that the crown of life that God has promised is going to those who love Him. Again, obedience is important. Obedience is honored. Obedience is blessed. But loving God is primary importance because loving God is what leads to obeying God. So blessed is the one who endures trials because when he has stood the test, I think that's an important concept because we can say all day long that we have faith in God. We can say all day long what we believe, but what matters is what happens to you when the test comes. Like you can sit in that math class all day long and say that you're learning everything that's going on while you're actually playing Candy Crush on your phone. But when the test comes, are you able to pass the test? Are you able to um, make the right grade? <clears throat> or do you not actually know what's going on? Because there's no genuineness to your mathematical faith, you know? Like, <laughs> there's no faith in the teaching. You didn't follow the teaching that was happening. You ignored the teaching. You did your own thing. And now the test has come and you're going to fail the test. So blessed is the one who endures trials because when he has stood the test and it's he or she here, definitely uh, he or she will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. So blessed for enduring trials, standing the test proves your faith really. And that, um, that loving God comes first before obeying God. Again, they're close together. They're connected. So don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying, that obedience isn't important. And one of the keys to enduring trials is, again, to believe that what God said is is true. So enduring the trial is also just a step of faith as well. It's acting as if you believe that what God has said is true. You believe that what God has said about eternity is true, that no matter what happens in this life, no matter what things are taken away from you, no matter how hard this life is, that the life that God has prepared for you is better by far. So then that means that no matter what you're facing, that the, the trial, the, uh, the test, the temptation that you're facing in this life is fleeting in comparison to what God has in store for us in eternity. So having that, uh, eschatological perspective, you know, that end times, um, the, the time to come kind of perspective is what helps us to be able to endure those trials and then stand the test and then receive the crown of life. So, so yeah, good stuff. 
All right. Let's actually stop right there for today. I think that's probably a good chunk uh, to kind of chew on today from the word of God, just talking about the rich man and the poor man and how even they are, but then also those who endure trials, um, how we endure trials, standing the test, and then receiving the crown of life and recognizing that it is loving God that is of primary importance. So just think about it today, pray about it today, meditate on these scriptures today and see what the Holy Spirit brings to life to you today for you to focus on, for you to grow in. And uh, let's do it. So I hope you are encouraged and strengthened today by the word of God. God bless you. Have a great day and I will see you tomorrow.